Hello, everyone. My guest today is Jordy Leeser. He's the co-founder and CEO of Stella Connect, a New York City-based software company that helps businesses drive engagement and performance on their frontline teams. He help, uh, Stella Connect clients include many of the biggest and most service-focused brands in the world, including Walmart, Mercedes-Benz, Warby Parker, and many others. All right, Jordy, you ready to take us to the top? Let's do it. Okay, so tell us, p- kind of paint the picture for us. What does Stella Connect do, and are you guys a pure play SaaS model? We are a pure SaaS model, uh, and as you described, our business is all about helping frontline teams, mostly customer service teams, uh, get the best out of their people, engage their people, uh, and measure you know who their best people are and who their bottom people are, and how to get those bottom people up. Um, it's a tough job doing customer service all day long, and so our tools and products help make it more fun and, and help them do their job better. What is um, good at Warby Parker is is measured by what? Audience surveys after a CS rep engages with a person or what? Yeah, it's, it's driven by a few things. One of them is customer feedback. So right after an interaction, the customer, the end customer, will get uh, a request for feedback with the photo of the rep they just talked to, a little bio of their interests and hobbies that really humanizes the experience uh, and, and the brand. And then the customer can, can basically suggest a reward or some sort of recognition if that person went above and beyond. Jordy, how, how do you convince, like if I just join Warby Parker, I get a great pair of glasses, I leave and I get an email with a cute little face of the customer success rep that helped me. And, and they're like, you know, what do you, th- what was he a five or a 10? I never fill that shit out. So do yeah. you bribe, do you bribe me or how do you get those actually filled out? Yeah, well, that's the problem we're solving is that most people don't fill out any of those. Yeah. Forms. They get like a two to three percent response rate in our company. Our, our requests for feedback are 30 to 50 percent. What's so, the secret? Uh, the secret is that we're humans and humans want and crave human connection. And so I don't really care about the brand. I care about the person. And so that's the, the secret sauce is that the person providing the service and the person receiving the service they realize this is about human beings. It's not about some nameless, faceless corporation. So if, if the customer success rep at Warby is named, you know, Joe James, you might say, hey, Nathan, uh, you know, Joe James next raise is dependent on like if you think he did a good or bad job, help him out, give him a rating, something like that. Yeah, no, we just say, hey, what did you think of your interaction with Joe? Uh, and okay. then we ask him, Hey, do you want to reward Joe? Do you think he did something? Do you want to like suggest he gets a, a, a steak dinner? He gets movie tickets. Oh, uh, fun. And people, and people actually, they, they crave this sort of engagement and gamification when it comes to people, because I mean, we've all been in a situation where you have an amazing experience and like, you wish you could do something nice or suggest that this person gets something good, but you're not going to fill out this like 20 question survey about the brand. Nobody wants to do that. Yeah, no, no. What, the only time those get filled out is if it, there's such an emotional visceral reaction that it's worth it. And that's usually when someone's pissed, not when they're yeah, really happy. Effect. It's they love you or they hate you and yeah. then they get anything. In the yeah. All right. Very interesting. Let's break down the economics on this bad boy. So what's the company going to pay you on average, maybe per year or per month to access your technology? So we're a per seat per month uh, SaaS model, subscription model. So just like uh, the CRM businesses, um, we integrate into those businesses. So Salesforce and Zendesk, uh, et cetera. And so uh, the pricing for us ranges any, anywhere from uh, 10 bucks a month all the way up to 40, 50 bucks a month per seat. Yep. Uh, and so it's a traditional SaaS uh, sort of business model. I want to get into the actual typical like team sizes you're signing up. So would, would you, is it fair to say the average first year contract for you guys is what, 50, 60, 80, 100K? Where do you think it is? Uh, we have teams of all sizes and shapes. So we have, uh, we start at roughly five to 10 people on a team and we work with uh, brands like you mentioned, Walmart has many thousands of reps. And so yeah. those contracts get well into the six figures. So it just depends on the size of the team. Really interesting. Okay. Is there any team size that's too small that you won't accept because you know it won't work? Roughly five. I mean, again, like if you're sitting with your team, there's a lot of like high fiving and kudos and listening and helping them out that, that you really you don't need necessarily something where you're having your customers kind of outsource that for you. But once you reach five or 10, I mean, the business owner and the manager need some help to scale that. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look across again, I know averages can be deceiving, but just for the sake of time, um, when it can't go down every cohort, if you look at your entire customer base and then all their active users, the seats mm-hmm. they're paying for, what would you say the average team size is on on your, on your platform? Um, I mean, we, we actually just looked at this. I mean, it's actually pretty split amongst the different cohorts that we have, we have far more of the smaller customers just of because course. there's more of them. But, uh, but yeah, we have, uh, the, I think the three cohorts though are sort of like, 
you know, early startups, maybe five to 25 seats. And then you have like the hundred to 500 seats. And those are kind of your middle stage or mid market businesses. And then you have the thousands. And then you actually have what I call the super enterprise, which we don't work with today, really. Uh, and that's like the the tens and tens of thousands. And there's only a handful of those companies out there. But you think about Verizon and AT&T and Chase, um, those types of companies are, they're a different beast because they have, you know, they got 50, 60,000 people around the world. Uh, it's like, it's a small army. So it's just yeah. a different kind of set. So are you north of, and I won't go more, I won't go more specific than this, but generally, I mean, are you north of like 200,000 seats a year kind of using you? Is that a good kind of chunk or not? Uh, no, not 200,000 seats. So we're, we're sort of, um, we're in the uh, high five figures, let's say kind of mid to high five figures in seat count. What's your growth goal to get to by the end of 2019? Do you think you can break a hundred or 200? Um, I mean, we actually don't think about seat count. We think more about a uh, dollar and sort of ARR for, for us. And so, but uh, obviously they, they correlate, but we're also trying to expand the value of the product. And so if we can deliver more value and therefore raise pricing or add modules and, you know, with, a with less seat count growth, we can get to a bigger scale and a more valuable product for our clients. So, um, but yeah, we're trying to roughly kind of, you know, between 60 and 80% growth, uh, each year is sort of how we're thinking about it in a modest, you know, sort of modest, but aggressive sort of <laughs> mixed. Uh, did you, method. did you hit that trailing 12 months? You grew by more than 60%. Yeah. Yep. Congratulations. Yep. That's great. Well, hold on. I, I can't congratulate you yet. I would love this if this is a bootstrap story, but have you raised? <laughs> we have a very complicated raising story in Uh-oh. history. So, uh, I mean, I don't know how much you give want me to the, give, give me the simple version if you can. Yeah. Uh, the simple version is, is we've raised, uh, $50 million plus to date, having built an entirely different business that we pivoted away from and actually recently spun out a month ago, um, which was the bulk and majority of that funding was for that legacy business. Um, and we had, you know, we had the biggest enterprise customers in the world on that legacy business. What was that business by the way? What's that? What was that business? It was called Stella Metrics and Stella Pulse. They're sort of like uh, brother sister products. And so we recently spun that out to Power Reviews um, and did in connection with that spin out, raise the new round of funding to focus exclusively on Stella Connect. And it was a long and complicated and hard fought story. Um, but now Stella Connect is, is what was uh, apparent to us. It's definitely the winner. And so we wanted to put all of our eggs in, uh, in that. So basket. how much did you raise just for that spin out? Uh, in connection with that, we raised, uh, it, this wasn't necessarily proceeds from the sale, but we raised, uh, through the VCs, um, an $11 million round last month or two months ago. Okay. And how much of that actually had to go to the parent company for the right to spin this IP out versus operation, operational capital? All of, all of that capital went, th- there were sort of two transactions done simultaneously. So the spin out happened and that had its own deal in economics. And then the raise was $11 million. Interesting. Raise. This and one st- of the investors in the raise was Zendesk as a strategic investor. Oh, that they put in most the eleven million. They didn't put in most, but they were. This is the first investment Zendesk has made in a startup, and so that, they were a contributor in this round. No, that, that's why I asked. I haven't heard them doing that before. That's great. Congratulations. Um, how did you manage expectations? I imagine investors that put in part of the fifty million are going, "Wait, this is bullshit." If you think this other thing you're spinning out is the most valuable thing, I want to be on that cap table. <laughs> so the investors, um, the investors have stick, stuck with us the entire time. So there's been no change in, in the profile of the investors. We've had some you know, challenges along the way where we had to do some difficult things with the cap table and people had to you know, take concessions and there, there was a lot of moving pieces. Uh, but the investors have been unbelievably supportive um, to, to make this possible. So for the us investors really. that put in that 50, they all to some degree are on Stella Connect's cap table. Oh yeah. All, I mean, all of the major investors have, and they all actually invested in this last round. Just so restructured. It could, could have been their fifth round of funding for the company. <laughs> all right. So 11 million into this new idea. And when did that happen? What year did the spin out happen? Uh, it was literally, uh, announced in February. So oh, wow. Okay. And how much, what's the team size today? Just on Stella Connect? Uh, 45. And how I, this is a kind of a sensitive question, but I'm curious, how aggressive are you being in terms of growth and burn? I mean, I assume you're cash flow negative at this point, but how, you know, how aggressively? Yeah, we are cash flow negative, but it's funny because I've, you know, I've lived the story now. I, I went all the way, you know, we raised, like I said, all that money. We built a huge team and we've had to go through the, the rings of fire. And now I sort of know <laughs> like, you know, growing is great, but growing when you're not exactly sure why you're growing or how it's working or what your clients are experiencing. So, 
uh, we're being aggressive, but like I said, kind of shooting for that like 60 to 80% year on year growth is the, is the target. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, I mean, can I try and quantify burn? Are you burning less than 500 grand a month? Uh, or around there? No, less than that, but not, I mean, we're in the zip code, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. The reason I ask is because I always, someone like you that was just through the ring of fire in your head, you're going, okay, how many months does 11 million get me in terms of runway, right? So that's why I'm trying to back into well, you raised for so, like- Yeah, I mean, generally I'm of the belief, you know, about 24 months of cash when you yeah. try to raise, but I'm also now in this stage of our cycle where we can get to a place that the business breaks even and we're profitable with this round but leaving open the optionality that if we continue to see that kind of growth, you know, we're going to want to step on it. And so we don't want to, you know, pull back if we're, if we're seeing that we can actually move a little bit faster. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. When did you, so when was the first line of code written for this new product, even though back in the day it was part of another company? Yeah. Yeah. The first line of code was written in 2015. It was launched in 2016 um, so we're really only, you know, about three years into this story. We already have hundreds of clients, like I said, had some very big brands on board. So really was the reason why we decided, you know, we really got to pivot and put all our eggs into this basket. Yeah, that's great. No. And so how many customers have you scaled to? You said a couple hundred, so like 300, 400, a few hundred. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Very good. And then, I mean, we can do math, right? If you're high five, well, let's just say you said high five figures in terms of seats. So we'll say North of 50,000 seats at 10 bucks a pop. I mean, you're North of half a million bucks in MRR at this point. Uh, yeah, that's great. By the way, that's great. I mean, I, I you know this because you just went through it, but you know we've interviewed about almost two thousand CEOs, and the ones that have the highest leverage, and this is going to be an obvious statement, but the ones that have the highest leverage are the ones that get their AR to funding ratio as close to one to one as possible. So it sounds like mm-hmm. if you're at kind of a kind of a five ish, you know, you're halfway there to getting up to the eleven, so you have leverage to go out and raise. Unless, I mean, would you wait that long to raise additional capital if you saw obvious growth? Yeah, we're farther along than that. And, okay. Uh, you know, we're, we're being as efficient as we can. But yes, I mean, I've, I've been, first of all, you know, I've, I, I have an obligation in, in raising as much money as we already have to know that that's, you know, all the $50 million has still been invested. So it's, it's, it's not, you know, I, I still feel like we have, we have a big business to build here. And so um, I want to try to extend the runway as much as we can while continuing to push it as much as we can. So when, when is the right next time for you to be raising an additional round of capital? How do you make that decision? Yeah, I think there's, you know, there's the, there's the, do we have a thing phase? And then there's the, do we know how to build a repeatable, you know, process phase? And then there's the, do we know how to scale it? And so we definitely are past the, do we have a thing? We're in the middle of, do we, you know, do we know how to do the product market, uh, go to market kind of, uh, repeatable thing. And we're getting pretty good. I mean, now that we're in the, uh, you know, seeing reps hitting quota and we're seeing renewal rates, expansion hat, like there's just still some dials that you want to see. And then when, when you start to realize where your demand gen, you can start to twist the knob and see that deliberate kind of twisting of the knob and start to see it go. Uh, once you know those channels, it's really the go to market channels that are really working. That's when I feel like it kind of doesn't matter how much, like if you can go, then, you know, like the investor model, like the VC model is you should be pushing it once you know, you can turn the dial and you know, what's going to happen. Yep. Yep. No, of course. So, so what right now is a hard, like what pro forma do you have the least confidence in right now where you want to test it a couple more times before you have confidence? It's, is it like the close yeah. rate on a new sales rep hire? Is yeah. it a specific channel and direct paid spend? What is it? Yeah, I think it's the cha- I think it's the channels for us. I mean, it's so we're inbound, outbound, and events. Those are the three main channels that we focus on. We don't do channel sales, you know, meaning selling through other companies. So wanting to see some more predictability around um, both, you know, or, or really all three of those inbound, outbound events. And we've seen a lot of success with events. And so we do these, you know, little events, and we do some larger events. We do other company events, and we're starting to figure out if we can kind of, you know, replicate these sorts of thought leadership. Uh, dinners and 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 roundtables and other sorts of thought leadership things, um, we can create a community. And so once we figure out you know exactly what the economics are on that, I think we, we might be in pretty good shape to go to the next level. Do you have economics yet around around kind of gross revenue churn annually, and does your expansion more than make up for that? Yeah, yeah. Last year we were uh, we were right around one thirty in our okay. net dollar base. Range. And peel that onion back a second. So what was just on a gross level? What was gross revenue churn? Um, it was in the low teens. Okay. So 12, 13, something like that. And then, you know, the one five forty, one forty five 
in terms of expansion. Yeah, 13% gross, 43% expansion gives you 130 net, uh, which is healthy. Uh, by the way, that's really, I mean, I would I would consider world-class to be 140, 150. I mean, you're, you're getting up yeah, there. Yeah, and that was like the surprise for us that the land and expand, if you, the product, when you know it's working, and this is what we did not see in our other business, which is why, you know, we, we really started to focus on this is, when you when you have a land and expand model where uh, very similar actually to Zendesk and you know there's a lot of other companies that have this where once one or two teams start to use it and they start to see success then they will help spread it in the in the company and in the organization we don't have the benefit of of selling into HR and then selling into finance and selling into market it's not one of those types of products we sell into one uh, group but what that group does is they might buy it for one team that's based in Dallas. And then they have another team that's based in Costa Rica and they have another team that's based in Canada. And so, you know, our goal is to get in with one team, show them what it can do, and then they will help uh, drive us the rest of the rest of the org. That's smart. Last economic question before we wrap up with the famous five. Um, how aggressive are you being on CAC? So a dollar, you know, a dollar out, are you happy to get like 50 cents back in or a dollar, you know, dollar new ARR? Yeah, we think about CAP. Uh, or uh, CAC in, in the payback a little bit differently because it's a land and expand model. And so, for example, you have some large companies that start to use the product after testing it and it costs us a lot because we have an enterprise uh, or sort of mid-market rep getting into that company. They might only be paying us 15K over the course of the year and it might have cost us a lot more than 15K to get in that business. But then it's really the 12 and 18 and 24 months later that we care about because it's a land and expand model. So uh, you're just not going to see the same sort of payback period. And actually, similar to us, you know, is look, reading through different S ones and um, you know, Zoom is like this too. By the way, Qualtrics the okay. same thing. Zoom and yeah. Qualtrics both you I saw the same pattern. Twenty five months, something like that. I think Zendesk is is way north of twelve, maybe eighteen to twenty four. So we're definitely that that's sort of our that's sort of our game. Yeah, I mean, and they can. By the way, they can only do that because they have so much cohort data, they have so much confidence in their expansion data, and they have machines around it where they'll they'll pay two two and a half years of of a you know of, of value up front. Yep. Um, so yep. okay, so let's just put a bracket. You're happy to spend between twelve and eighteen months because you have forty plus percent expansion on cohorts. Mm -hmm. Is that yep. right? Yeah. Yep. Very cool. All right. Let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Favorite business book? Um, Fooled by Randomness. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, yeah. Hard not to follow Dara, but um, yeah, let's leave it at that. Uber? Yes. Yeah. Number two is, uh, number three, what's your favorite online tool for building your company? Um... Uh, I really don't have one. Honestly, <laughs> well, that's for you, for you at this point, it's gotta be like, you know, you know, uh, Carta or some cap table management <laughs> software. <laughs> yeah. We actually just signed up for Carta. It's a, my CFO is like, a, <laughs> there you yes. go. All right. Sure. Number four, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? Uh, well, I had a, my first baby a couple months ago, so very little. Congrats. That's great. So what, five or six? Uh, way less than that a few Ooh. months ago now it's like the low quality sleep but call it six but very low quality fair enough okay and then situation married and one kiddo it sounds like married with one kid and yes. how old are you i'm 36 35 35 last question what do you wish your 20 year old self knew uh how long it takes and how many bumps and bruises you're gonna get even though i knew that i didn't really feel it i didn't really hear it you know i knew it but i didn't know it so. yeah Guys, there you have it. Stella Connect helping big enterprise brands like Warby Parker gather better feedback on their CS reps, which enables them to give rewards more appropriately. This was a spin out. So the company after the spin out raised about 11 million bucks, but had raised 50 million prior to that. All the same investors though are doubling down. So they still believe in the vision. Over 300 customers right now, north of 50,000 paid seats at 10 bucks a month. So call it north of four or 500 grand a month in revenue right now, probably maybe well north of that. Uh, economics look really good, 13% gross churn. 43% expansion, expansion, so 140% net revenue retention as Jordy looks to scale the business further. Jordy, thank you for taking us to the top. All right, thank you.